So in this lecture, we'll be looking at what I consider to be one of the more confusing aspects of quantum mechanics. So it's some experimental evidence seems to suggest that a photon of light can actually be in two places at once. So the way around this is to actually think of light as a probability wave. So let's have a look at how we do that now. So previously we've looked at Young's double slit experiment for electromagnetic waves. We've seen that if we have two slits through which light can pass then and put a screen on which the light can be observed, we get a series of maximums and minimums corresponding to destructive and constructive interference. Now we can imagine putting a detector on our screen and moving it and if that detector detects photons then the number of photons it detects per unit time in a certain volume will be proportional to the intensity of light at that place. So if we imagined it making a little click whenever it detected a photon of light, when it was in the intense regions we'd be getting something like and when it was in the destructive regions we get something like so we can't say exactly when our detector is going to click. All we can say is the probability of it clicking in a certain amount of time. Okay, so this gives us a way to measure that intensity of light and relate it back to probabilities. Okay, now a very exciting and interesting experiment that G.I. Taylor conducted back in 1909 was instead of having a very intense light source, he had a very dim source. So dim in fact that it only released one photon at a time. Now what's going to happen with our interference pattern if we're only releasing one photon at a time? Can that photon interfere with itself and still create an interference pattern or is its root set is going to go through one of the holes and not the other and so we'll just get one point on the screen at which that photon is definitely detected. Well it turns out from doing the experiment which has been repeated a number of times since that in fact a single photon can interfere with itself. So this seems to suggest that it can go through both of those holes in the Young's double slit experiment at the same time. So how can we describe this? Well if we describe light as a probability wave where if we put a detector the probability is related to the probability of it detecting a photon it turns out that we can explain this strange behavior. So it's important to remember that we can't directly detect the photons as they're passing through the Young's apparatus. All we can do is detect the photons. We can tell when the photon is leaving our source and we're detecting it on the screen. Now it turns out if we try and detect through which hole that photon passes, well this collapses the probability function because then we know that it's passed through one hole and not the other. So if we do make that measurement, then we're forcing it to go through one hole and we actually no longer get that interference pattern. So a somewhat related thought experiment is the Schrodinger cat thought experiment. So in this experiment we have a nucleus which is set to decay at some time. We don't know exactly when it's going to decay, we just know the probability of decay. And there's a Geiger counter in the box with it. If the Geiger counter and, and a live cat, if the Geiger counter detects the decay, it breaks a vial of poison which is also in the box and the cat dies. So according to quantum mechanics this nucleus because it's got a probability of decaying and we're not directly observing it can be in both the decayed and non-decayed state at the same time. So it's got a certain probability of being in one or the other but effectively it's in the superposition of these two states. Like our photon it could pass through both of those young stubble slit, uh, slit holes as long as we didn't detect it. And so the paradox with Schrodinger's cat with the Schrodinger cat experiment is does this mean that the cat itself is in both an alive and dead state at the same time? 
and there's actually a lot of debate and philosophical points of view on this. Is the Geiger counter making the detection enough to collapse the probability function, which seems to be the more standard interpretation at the moment. So the Geiger counter itself determines whether the cat is alive and or dead, and so the cat itself isn't actually in both an alive or dead state. But not everybody agrees with this, so it's an interesting thought experiment to think about, which is related to these probability waves and the probabilistic description that quantum mechanics actually gives. So hopefully that's given you a little taster for this confusing part of quantum mechanics.